Hello, I've been using my BedJet 3.0 for about four months now, and I love it. Stay tuned and I'll tell you why. This is Liz from Comfort Sleep Sanctuary. Today we're gonna to talk about the BedJet 3.0. What is it? And why do you want one? How to set it up? How to control it? It's very easy and a few strategies I use to maintain my perfect temperature. Well, as close as I can get it. Stick around because I'm gonna to try to address some questions like, does it work with a weighted blanket? For my full written review, check out the links in the description below or go to our website, comfortsleepsanctuary.com. First, what is this bed jut? Viewers of this channel know that I am obsessed with sleeping in the perfect temperature. I'm usually too hot. The bed jet blows the perfect temperature air under the covers to keep you cool or warm. It can heat the air. You can throw out your electric blanket now. It can also blow cool air that comes from your floor. Unfortunately, the bed jet is not a replacement for an air conditioning unit. It can only blow cool air that it finds in the air, more specifically the cool air that's sitting on your floor. And that may be enough. I talk a lot on this channel about evaporative cooling. This is one reason an overhead fan will make you feel cooler even though it's not any cooler in the room. Same principle here, air under the covers will pull away sweat and heat from your skin and that will make you feel cooler. Your bedding will stay drier. This is good for all kinds of reasons. One, as we talked about, you feel cooler. Two, it may be healthier. All those icky things like bacteria, fungi, dust mites, things that trigger my allergies. Well, they need a nice humid environment to propagate. So if you dry out the area, most of those may be toast. Although well, it's no guarantee. If you don't have allergies and you're not sweating under the covers, you might not need to launder your bedding quite so often. Setup is very easy. If you have any problems, the customer service at BedJet is very good. They were very fast and responsive at answering a few questions that I had. The main part is the control box, which has the fan and it's not particularly large. I just shove mine under the bed, hidden away. So this is my bed jet at the end of my bed. And you can see down there is my controller, which is under my bed. And so what I'm going to do is show you kind of the setup. But this is what it looks like in real life. You have the controller that is connected to the hose and this is a very flexible hose. You could stretch it, you can bend it, and it is sitting in a little plastic bracket. And this little bracket, hi kitty, goes under a holder like this, and then it is held up with a little adapter that looks like this. And it's actually very easy to take your sheets on and off with this adapter in place as well as your mattress pad. So these little adapters, I have a very um, short mattress, so I don't need very many, but they just click out like that. So you can add as many as you want if you have a taller mattress. Right here, this is where the air comes out. I want the air on my feet, and so I'm gonna seal it in with my top sheet, like so. The next part of the setup is to download the app to your cell phone. Obviously they have an iPhone app as well as an Android app. Right now the iPhone app doesn't do much. It simply connects the control box to the internet so that it can get future firmware updates. Just do that once and you're done. The Android app is a little bit more sophisticated. It actually includes programming similar to the remote. The fully functional iPhone app with all the programming isn't available yet, but depending on when you're listening to this, it might be. So right now, if you are an iPhone user, you will have to use the remote, 
This is not a bad thing. It's an excellent remote and it's very intuitive. And here's the remote. We have cool, heat, turbo, and dry. And these are actually defaults, so you can actually change them. Below that are probably the most important right here, which are the temp, time, and fan. So if we try something like this, try cool, you can see right now I have it set to 30% fan speed, setting of 69 degrees Fahrenheit, and a time of 10 hours. But I could change that if I wanted to. I actually use it at fan speed of 30% or below because it gets a little noisy. If you don't mind, you can use the higher fan speeds. There's heat. This particular one is for 30 minutes and 89 degrees. But you can see my room is around 72. This is really nice when you first get into bed and you want toasty warm feet, but you don't want to keep your bed warm because you'll just get too hot. But so 30 minutes is about perfect. Again, you can adjust the fan speed however you like. You also have turbo. Turbo is 100% fan speed and very, very high temperature. And this is if you want to pre-warm your bed. You can see it's only 10 minutes. Pre-warm your bed and get it really toasty warm before you jump in. Using the remote, you could pick any fan speed and temperature you like, and you could stop there. However, the real benefit of the bed jet is the programming. Many of you know that as you fall asleep, your core temperature starts to drop the temperature that you feel comfortable also starts to drop. So the ideal thing is to create a temperature profile, which maybe starts very toasty warm in the very beginning, and then as you fall asleep, gradually drops in temperature, at some point in the night hits a bottom temperature, and then gradually comes right back up again. Below all this are three presets, M1, M2, and M3. And these are where you would set your program. Let me show you what the program looks like. So you'd go to Biorhythm and Create or Edit. And let's just see what this one looks like. This is what my number one profile looks like. And I start at 73 degrees and I cool down throughout the night, and then I warm back up again. In this one, I have seven steps, but of course you can make as many as you want. And each step can be by time, like for example, let's say you want 30 minutes of a certain temperature, or it could be by clock time. So you could have a certain temperature until say one in the morning. I haven't done this, but you can also program a heat alarm clock. When it comes time for you to wake up, the bed jet will start blowing really warm air at you, which should wake you up. Another minor downside is because your temperature profile is unique, you can't simply copy one. Well, you can copy one, and usually that's a good starting point, but what is comfortable for one person may not be comfortable for another person. So you may need to experiment over the next days and weeks. Maybe keep a little notepad by your bed. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're too hot or too cold, you can make an adjustment here. However, you may want to write that down and then go back into the temperature profile and rejigger the programming a little bit. Before we go any further, we should talk about the cloud sheet. Cloud sheet is basically two sheets that are sewn together one end goes over the bed jet, and then the air can be evenly distributed between the two sheets. Cloud sheet is sold separately and it is completely optional. However, if there is two of you and you have two different bed jets blowing two different temperatures of air, you probably will need the cloud sheet just to keep those two temperatures separate. Would have been nice if they made the cloud sheet in a different fabric, such as lyocell or linen. 
However, the cloud sheet is made of 100% cotton. Most of you will think that that's fine. It's a very nice cotton. It's 100% percale on one side and sateen on the other side. However, when it comes to bedding, many of you know I hate cotton. Sure, it breathes, but it is terrible at wicking away moisture. It is not a good cooling fabric. And sure, the bed jet itself kind of fixes that problem because it is wicking away moisture with all that air. But still, it's the principle of the matter. I did buy a cloud sheet to test it out, but to be honest, I don't use it. So if you choose not to use the cloud sheet, well then how does it work? Bedjet will now blow air at your feet. It's up to you, but for me, I like the room to be somewhat quiet, so I keep the fan speed under 30%. If I'm using really lightweight bedding, then that air will go everywhere under the covers. However, if I'm using heavier bedding, especially a weighted blanket, then that air will get stuck down by my feet. This creates two microclimates under the covers. There's one at my feet, which might have blowing, cooling air, and then the rest of me, which may be a little bit more cozy. And I'm sure there's some air getting to the rest of me. Usually I sleep on my side, a little bit curled up. If I get a little too hot, I simply extend a leg down into the lower end of my bed to release some of that cool air. I may even do a little leg lift, which will release the air into the rest of the bed. One advantage of this is that I don't have to have an exact temperature. I can have it just a little bit on the cool side, and then most of the time I'm curled up, staying cozy in the upper end of the bed, and if I need to cool down, I just extend a body part to the lower end of the bed. This works for me because I like to keep the fan speed cool but you may be different. If you don't mind having a higher fan speed, then you can have much more complete coverage of air throughout the bed. If you currently enjoy a bed jet, what strategies are you using to stay cool or stay warm? If you don't own one yet, what questions do you have? Comment below, you may inspire my next video topic. And if you're thinking about getting your own bed jet, please use the affiliate link in the description below or on our website. And as always, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Nighty night. Pretty clear. It has a pretty...